Hi, everybody. I'm Philip Schulman, Director of Trump Rapid Response for the State Democratic Party of Wisconsin. And today I'm going to be talking with Sarah Godlewski, the State Treasurer for Wisconsin, who is playing a vital role uh, in the midst of the COVID pandemic and what our economy is going to look like. Um, but before we jump into that, uh, I'd love to hear from you, Sarah, you know, what, uh, what your background is and sort of what led you to this point to ultimately run for State Treasurer and then, you know, why you're in this job now. Well, first of all, Phil, thanks for having me. Um, I like to joke that running for state treasurer was never my dream as a kid. I wasn't one of those people who were drawing safety deposit boxes or dollar signs on my notebook as a kid. So prior to being elected, I actually helped co-found an investment firm that worked with small businesses to get the financing tools that they needed. And love that job working side by side with some of these small business owners because they are really tough. They're gritty. I mean, they're creative and just loved working with them. And then before that, um, I was actually in government. So I worked at the Pentagon. My role when I was there was really looking at how can we be more effective and efficient with tax dollars. And so between my role in the public sector and my role at the private sector, I just felt those were two kind of key areas that a chief investment officer for the state should have experience in. That's great. And obviously things are probably crazier than you could have ever imagined. Um, do you think you could give us just a brief overview sort of, of what you're hearing from small and medium sized businesses? What are the hurdles they're facing? Um, and just, you know, whether, whether it's, you know, regional or if you're hearing this across the state. So when this pandemic hit the state, one of the first things I did was actually reach out to business owners across the state, because we know that small and medium sized businesses fuel our economy here in Wisconsin. They're absolutely critical to our overall financial well-being. But nobody expected this crisis to have the breadth and depth as, that it does. I mean, no one expected it to be this significant. We have never seen something like this in our lifetime. And so the question to these small business owners is, is what do you need? They are looking for government to help them kind of overcome these challenges. And as government, we need to do this because it's critical to our economy here in Wisconsin. You know, I've seen you speak out a bunch about the Paycheck Protection Program funds and sort of how they haven't been allocated properly, that there doesn't really seem to be the oversight needed to get these this money into the hands of small and medium-sized businesses, and this is taxpayer money. Um, can you speak a little bit to the problems that you're seeing with that program and, again, what um, these businesses you're dealing with on a regular basis are struggling with? Yeah, and um, I mean, Phil, I think it really goes into two buckets. The first bucket um, with the Paycheck Protection Program is how do we make sure the money that has been allocated actually gets to small businesses. Because we've seen with regards to how the Trump administration has actually been executing this program, they just have really prioritized Wall Street over Main Street. So how can we ensure these funds actually get to the mom and pop shops that we all know are the lifeline of a lot of our communities across Wisconsin? I think the second bucket goes into what we care about as taxpayers. I mean, these are tax dollars that are being used, and we want to make sure that there is transparency and accountability into how these funds are, at, are being leveraged and making sure they get to small businesses and that we as citizens have access to that. One of the things that has become entirely clear is that the Paycheck Protection Program relies on banks. And in doing so, a lot of these big banks have prioritized the big companies over small businesses. And one woman that I was talking to up in Northern Wisconsin was saying she went to her bank that was a large, very large bank. And they kept saying, we're not ready for you yet. We, you know, come back later, come back later. We're not ready for you yet. And then she reads in the paper that that bank was actually facilitating significant loans for publicly traded companies. She now needs them in this time of need and they're not prioritizing her. Um, so that was, that's really frustrating. I think the other thing kind of uh, people don't know what to do about it is looking at even um, workers in the gig economy 
And so in the gig economy, I'm talking about people who might own like a web, a website consulting where it's just them, or um, there are these kind of sole proprietors. And so in talking to literally a, a guy that owns his own website shop, it's just him. He was explaining that, um, you know, this, this company, this program isn't made for me. They are prioritizing big business over me. Um, and I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. I don't know how I'm going to keep my business alive. And we know a lot of businesses in Wisconsin are sole proprietors or what we call 1099 contractors. And so these programs haven't been, aren't made for them. Um, and so we really need to be thinking about not just how are we ensuring the money actually gets to small business, um, but how are we transparent and accountable so it's not just big pharma. I mean, we're reading stories that pharmaceutical companies and investment firms were getting money. You know, people who are struggling in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, that doesn't seem fair. And as a taxpayer, Bill, that's not right because the program was never intended to go to these larger companies that actually have access to credit already. And so I think these are issues that we need to really shine a light on and ensure that companies that have people less than 20, employees less than 20, or how they're actually, what, what companies got money, like providing some sort of transparency and accountability is essential. It seems to me, um, you know, Wisconsin has this very strong entrepreneurial, go out of yourself spirit, but uh, that isn't necessarily being respected by the federal government and that, um, Basically, you have to know someone to get the help you need, which isn't how it should be. One of the things that I also just find shocking is the lack of transparency. I mean, we know um, the Trump administration, Steve Mnuchin, who is head of Treasury, can easily publish who got these funds. So us as taxpayers know, was it actually the small businesses that were intended to get the money? Or was it these larger companies that have donor relationships um, that are actually getting the funding? And as taxpayers, I think we have the right to know that. And to that point, um, you know, what, what are you doing at a state level, you know, because the federal government clearly hasn't done what they should be doing? What are you, how are you making up the ground at the state level? So we have an all hands on deck approach here in Wisconsin and um, Governor Evers has done everything he can within his executive authority to help small businesses. So um, working with the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation, they have uh, provided financing opportunities for micro businesses and those are businesses that have fewer than 20 people. Um, for us, we've been really focusing on a couple of things. I think first, Phil, is we've been calling business owners to really understand what these gaps are because the reality is, is we don't want to be redundant. We really want to fill in where there are the greatest needs. And I think what we are finding is the greatest needs are with small business and with the sole proprietor or independent contractors here in Wisconsin. Um, the other piece that I've been working on as the chief financial officer is also thinking about how are we partnering with local communities, so counties and cities to develop revolving loan funds. We know that um, a lot of times it's local government that really knows what these needs are and where these businesses are hurting. And so how can we partner with them through financing opportunities um, to empower not just that community, but also those businesses is there um, to best serve their needs. Right. And so obviously there's only so much though you and the state government can do to help fill the gaps. What is President Trump and the administration going to have to do to sort of make this really a full hands-on approach both at a state level and a national level and get us, you know, at least to some sense of normalcy for businesses again? Wisconsin cannot do this alone. We need the federal government to absolutely help drive this. I mean, they have their resources list compared to ours is just night and day. Unlike the state government, they can go into a deficit. They can kind of run the money show at the federal level. And we at the state cannot. First and foremost, we need to make sure that these small business programs ha are in really meet the intent. So they're helping to find small business. And then further, I think there needs to be an accountability piece that is built in because what we are hearing is that these big pharma mega companies got money, but how are they giving this back? We know that they have access to capital through investors or through lines of credit. So they don't need maybe the 
five, 20 million that they could have gotten of taxpayer dollars. So what's the process in getting that money back? What, what are the ramifications for them basically taking advantage of taxpayers to pay back their CEOs or to give stock buybacks? These are things that I think are critical when we are in a financial fragile position that we need to hold people, hold these companies accountable to give back money so then we can give that here in Wisconsin to these small businesses. In closing, um, we know, Phil, that um, supporting our local governments is really important in doing this as well. Um, at the end of the day, we're seeing a decrease and a delay in revenues locally, but they're seeing an increase in expenses with how they're combating COVID-19 locally. And we want to make sure they have the resources Sources they need to continue these services for their communities and continuing to advocate, um, whether it is for the firefighter, the police officer, but also the small business. We need all hands on deck. I'm, I'm proud of that some of the work we have been doing together in the state of Wisconsin, but believe that we need to continue to advocate this for uh, with the administration. Our financial well-being is, is really relying on this. That's great. And you know, you actually uh, answered my last question was what comes next, but we clearly have that answer now. So uh, with that, thank you so much, Sarah, for joining today. Thank you all for watching this video and learning more about uh, sort of the state of the financial situation and what small businesses are facing. And uh, again, thank you for all your work and the work that um, all these folks are doing across the state. Th thanks for having me, Phil.